Okay, so can you tell me who you are and your job role? Okay, so um, I'm Billy McLean, Associate Director for AHPs in uh, Shurinamur. And what do you know about the CAPA programme? So uh, the CAPA programme for me has been a, a big shift in the way that we look at people who are in, in care homes and people who generally, I think, have been, uh, once people have found themselves in care homes, really left um, and, and uh, not been thought about as, as having uh, the ability to, to improve and to re rehabilitate. I think the CAPA programme brings a different approach and a different perspective that really sees people as having the ability of, of continually improving and being able to improve physically uh, and, and bringing that physical activity approach into that care home environment. What I really like about the CAPA approach is that it's about it's everybody's business it's not just one person's business it's not about one person going in and delivering a, a physical activity approach it's about an ethos and a culture of introducing activity into as many aspects of, of the residents lives uh, as they can and I can see huge benefits for the residents um, and, and from what I've seen and heard about CAPA can already see the difference that that makes to people's quality of life but also the impact that it's got on the health and social care system so by people being fitter more active um, and they're at less risk of falls ultimately and, and that's likely to mean that people are needing to go into hospital less frequently they're going to keep themselves generally physically more well I know from a personal perspective that physical activity is really important for me and for my family um, and equally for, uh, for those residents physical activity is going to be really important in keeping them uh, generally well as well as all the uh, sort of specific um, reasons for exercising around falls prevention and so on. And what do you think the AHPs have a role to play? What do you think we should be doing? So uh, as, a, as a qualified physiotherapist, I suppose that's where I have that understanding of physiotherapy and physiotherapy's role around physical activity. Uh, you know, we have that training, that background, that understanding about the specifics and the, um, the, the, how and what type of exercise is going to be important for different people and how we balance that risk. Um, so how we can support people to be active, uh, as active as possible and get the benefits of exercise as safely as possible. So getting that balance of risk. I think the role that AHPs in general have is, is bringing that level of expertise and providing that support and mentorship and, and almost um, providing that consultative role uh, and, and supporting care homes in that CAPRA approach uh, supporting care homes to get those programs up and running and, and being a, a point of contact if, if people uh, require further support. I think the AHP um, community in general has that role to play around uh, being the eyes and ears so uh, AHPs even uh, particularly OTs again who have a role to play in activity and also the AHPs so uh, dietitians who if you're going to be exercising you need to have good nutrition so that you're obviously able to get the benefits of that exercise in, even though uh, speech and language therapy might not be directly linked but they may well be in those environments where they can support those conversations and signpost and podiatry obviously uh, are going to be key around making sure that foot care is, is um, going to allow people and enable people to, to remain active so I think all the AHPs have a, a big role to play uh, physiotherapy in particular around the specifics of exercise any final thoughts on the kind of future of the CAPA program or where you see the CAPA principles moving on? So I, I, I think in terms of the CAPA program it, it from what I understand it's in the early stages it's starting to to, to grow and, and um, get uh, get a momentum around a number of care homes. I, I think it's got huge potential in terms of supporting people but also supporting the system, the health and social care system, um, as I said earlier, so that uh, actually the benefits to individuals mean that people are going into uh, 
hospital less frequently, finding themselves hopefully falling uh, less less often, and and generally, uh, you know, uh, living a better quality of life. So I think I think it's got huge potential. I think in terms of where where things are heading, the um, the multi generational work, so uh, working where where uh, nursery schools and care homes are coming together to to bring benefits to both uh, of those communities. I think that's going to be really important, and I can really see how that's that's a, a, a new and innovative approach that's going to bring real benefits to uh, to both the children and the residents of care homes, and again in terms of activity I think just thinking about how we can expand residents ability to be active and, and uh, participate as often as possible in, in a, a number of different environments uh, I think I think uh, would be the direction I see things going in I also think that uh, so at the moment it's focused around care homes but I also think that uh, people who are receiving care at home and having that approach in terms of the enablement teams and those links with the enablement teams i think there's a lot of learning that that's come from kappa that could be spread into into those approaches as well perfect and um, one other thing that i was going to ask was part of kappa is all about using the improvement approach which is something a bit different and getting care staff to use improvement methodology and improvement science and it seems to be working really well what are your thoughts on Everyone using an improvement yeah, so I'm um, so I've got my little badge on. I've got uh, so being a being a, a skill um, uh, what's the word a skill alumni. Then uh, quality improvement for me is absolutely uh, fundamental. It's something that I am certainly trying to encourage across the whole of our workforce making sure that everybody has an awareness so as you say encouraging people uh, you know carers in care homes um, support workers all our AHP community all our health and social care community to use that approach so that every uh, every day people are thinking about improvement and how they can improve the system uh, so that tomorrow next week next year things will be better than they were today so that's that's the key thing for me i think in terms of having the infrastructure in place it's really key to have some people who have a a, a high level of understanding that expertise in that so that, that again they can provide that mentorship and support it's not about everybody needing to be an expert and actually if we can break it down to some some basic principles then uh, that's probably the best way that we can make everybody think about how we improve things every day Okay.